Welcome to Shah Medical Surgical. Today, we will explore the art and science of history taking in urology. From common symptoms like flank pain, hematuria, and lower urinary tract symptoms to complex cases involving infertility, ED, and chronic pelvic pain. We'll guide you through the essential steps to ensure accurate diagnosis and compassionate patient care. Before going to video please like, share and subscribe. Why is history taking important in urology? Urological complaints often overlap, and an accurate history helps in identifying the root cause. A structured approach to history taking ensures a comprehensive assessment and aids in making a differential diagnosis. Good communication not only improves patient rapport but also ensures better compliance with treatment plans. Steps for Structured History Taking To ensure a thorough and systematic history taking process, follow these steps. 1. Presenting complaint. Begin with an open-ended question about the patient's primary concern. Let them describe their symptoms in their own words. 2. History of presenting illness. Delve into the symptoms, focusing on their onset, duration, progression, severity, and how they impact daily life. 3. Past medical history, emphasize urinary, systemic, and surgical history that might contribute to the current condition. 4. Family, social, and lifestyle history, explore genetic predispositions, smoking habits, alcohol use, and any occupational exposures. 5. Review of systems, conduct a comprehensive review of urinary, reproductive, and general health to identify associated or systemic symptoms. Key history questions for flank pain. Flank pain is a common complaint in urology, and these are the key questions to ask. 1. Onset, was the pain sudden or gradual? 2. Character, is the pain sharp, dull, or colicky? 3. Radiation, does it spread to the groin or lower abdomen? 4. Severity, can the patient rate the pain on a scale of 1 to 10? 5. Duration. Is the pain constant or intermittent? Associated symptoms. Ask about symptoms such as nausea and vomiting, which are common with renal colic. Fever and chills may indicate an infection like pyelonephritis. Hematuria can suggest stones, trauma, or tumors. Dysuria often points to a urinary tract infection or stone passage. Common causes of flank pain. Flank pain may arise from Kidney stones, these cause sharp, colicky pain, often with hematuria and nausea. Pyelonephritis, this presents as dull, constant pain accompanied by fever and dysuria. Tumors, typically, they cause dull, persistent pain, sometimes with weight loss or hematuria. Trauma, pain linked to a history of injury to the kidneys or surrounding areas. Lower urinary tract symptoms. They are categorized into two types. Storage symptoms. Frequency, an increased need to urinate during the day. Urgency, a strong, sudden urge to urinate that's difficult to delay. Nocturia, waking up at night to urinate. Incontinence, unintentional leakage of urine. Voiding symptoms. Hesitancy, difficulty initiating urination. Weak stream, reduced force of urine flow. Straining, the need to push to urinate. Post-void dribbling, leakage after completing urination. Common causes of lower urinary tract symptoms include BPH, benign prostatic hyperplasia gradual onset avoiding symptoms. Overactive bladder, OAB causes urgency, frequency, nocturia, and incontinence. UTI, urinary tract infection causes frequency, urgency, dysuria, and cloudy urine. Bladder outlet obstruction, BOO results in straining, weak stream, and incomplete emptying. Hematuria. History taking for hematuria involves these key questions. 1. Onset. When did the hematuria start? 2. Type. Is the hematuria gross, visible, or microscopic, detected in labs? 3. Timing. Does the blood appear throughout urination, or only at the start or end? 4. Clots. Are there any clots, and what is their shape? 5. Associated symptoms. Is there pain, fever, recent trauma, or any systemic symptoms? Common causes of hematuria include Kidney stones. Hematuria often accompanies painful renal colic. Infections, dysuria, fever, 
and puria are present with UTIs. Tumus, painless hematuria, especially in smokers, may indicate tumus. Trauma, hematuria could result from injury or accident. Glomerulonephrites, dark urine with systemic symptoms like edema or hypertension. Erectile dysfunction, ED. When assessing erectile dysfunction, ask the following questions. 1. Onset, is the dysfunction gradual or sudden? 2. Consistency, does it happen with all partners or just one? 3. Morning erections, are morning erections present? Their absence may suggest psychological causes. 4. Medical conditions, are there any underlying conditions like diabetes, hypertension, or cardiovascular diseases? 5. If medications, are any new medications contributing to the issue? Common causes of ED. Common causes of erectile dysfunction include organic causes, these include vascular, hormonal, or neurological conditions. Psychological causes, stress, anxiety, or depression can contribute. Medications, some antihypertensives and antidepressants can cause ED, lifestyle factors, smoking, alcohol consumption, and a sedentary lifestyle can play a role. Urinary retention. Urinary retention is categorized into two types, one, acute retention, this involves sudden, painful inability to urinate. Two, chronic retention, this is a more gradual onset, with painless, frequent small voids or overflow incontinence. History taking for urinary retention. When taking a history for urinary retention, focus on, one, onset, is it sudden or gradual? Two, associated symptoms, is there pain? frequency, or dribbling. 3. Previous episodes, has the patient experienced similar events before? 4. Underlying conditions, conditions like BPH, strictures, or neurogenic bladder should be explored. History taking for scrotal pain and swelling. When assessing scrotal pain and swelling, ask about, 1. Onset, was the pain sudden or gradual? 2. Pain, is it constant or intermittent, and how severe is it? 3. Swelling, is the swelling localized or generalized? For associated symptoms, is there fever, redness, or urinary symptoms? 5. Trauma history, has there been recent injury to the area? Common causes of scrotal pain and swelling. Common causes include, epididymitis forchitis, gradual onset with fever and tenderness. Testicular torsion, sudden, severe pain with a high riding testis. Hydrosal, painless swelling, with positive transillumination. Tumus, gradual swelling with a painless mass. Infertility, general questions. When assessing infertility, ask about, 1. Duration of trying to conceive, how long has the patient been trying to conceive without success? 2. Frequency of intercourse, how often does the couple engage in intercourse? 3. Timing of intercourse, is ovulation being tracked or intercourse timed around fertile days? Male partner specific questions. Specific questions for the male partner include, 1. Erection and ejaculation, any issues with achieving or maintaining an erection or ejaculation? 2. Testicular conditions, any history of testicular injuries, infections, or surgeries? 3. Sexually transmitted infections, STIs any previous diagnosis or treatment for STIs. Lifestyle factors in infertility. Ask about lifestyle factors. 1. Smoking or alcohol use, does the male partner smoke or consume alcohol regularly? 2. Occupational exposures, is there exposure to excessive heat, chemicals, or tight clothing? 3. Fertility evaluation, has the male partner undergone semen analysis or any previous evaluations? Female partner-specific questions. Questions for the female partner include, 1. Menstrual history, when was the last menstrual period, and is it regular? 2. Ovulation symptoms, are there any signs of ovulation, such as changes in cervical mucus? 3. Contraception history, has the female partner used birth control, and when did she stop? Pelvic surgeries or infections, have you had any pelvic surgeries, pelvic inflammatory disease, PID, or STIs? Pregnancy history, have you been pregnant before? If yes, were there any complications like miscarriages or ectopic pregnancies? 
Couples history and systemic factors. Take a full couple's history. 1. Contraceptive use. Have either partner used contraception, and when did they stop? 2. Previous fertility evaluations. Have either partner been evaluated for fertility in the past? 3. Systemic conditions. Ask about chronic illnesses, like diabetes or thyroid disorders, and lifestyle factors such as weight, diet, and exercise. Chronic pelvic pain syndrome. Key history points for chronic pelvic pain syndrome include 1. Duration of pain, chronic pain lasting for more than three months. 2. Location, pain localized to the perineum, pelvis, or lower back. 3. Triggers, activities such as prolonged sitting, stress, or certain foods, like spicy foods, can exacerbate symptoms. For associated symptoms, patients may report urinary frequency, urgency, or sexual dysfunction. 5. Impact on daily life. Ask about the effect on work, relationships, and emotional well-being. Common causes of chronic pelvic pain syndrome. 1. Chronic prostatitis, often accompanied by painful urination and voiding symptoms. 2. Pelvic floor dysfunction, muscle tension contributing to pain and discomfort. 3. Interstitial cystitis, also known as painful bladder syndrome, often associated with urgency and frequency. Explore the patient's psychological state, as chronic pelvic pain syndrome is often linked to stress and anxiety. Always rule out infections or other urological conditions that may mimic chronic pelvic pain syndrome symptoms. Penile discharge or lesions. Key history questions for penile discharge or lesions. 1. Nature of discharge. Inquire about the color, consistency, and odor of the discharge. 2. Timing. When did the lesion or discharge first appear? Is it persistent or intermittent? 3. Associated symptoms. Look for pain, swelling, redness, or itching around the genital area. 4. Sexual history. Recent sexual partners, condom use, or history of sexually transmitted infections, STIs. 5. Systemic symptoms, fever, malaise, or joint pain may indicate a systemic infection. Common causes of penile discharge or lesions. 1. Sexually transmitted infections, STIs gonorrhea and chlamydia, often cause purulent discharge. Syphilis, painless ulcers, chanka, in early stages. Herpes, painful blisters or ulcers with recurrent episodes. 2. Balanitis, inflammation or infection of the gland's penis, commonly due to poor hygiene or fungal infection. 3. Urethritis, inflammation of the urethra often linked to gonorrhea or chlamydia. 4. Non-infectious causes, traumatic injury or allergic reactions to products like soaps or latex. Autoimmune conditions, such as Bersay's disease, may also present with genital lesions. Encourage patients to undergo testing for STIs, even if symptoms are mild. Always approach this topic with sensitivity to ensure the patient feels comfortable discussing their concerns. Conclusion Mastering history-taking in urology is crucial for accurate diagnosis and effective treatment. Approach each patient with empathy and active listening, ensuring that all symptoms, underlying causes, and red flags are documented. Effective communication plays a pivotal role in urological care. Establish trust, encourage open dialogue, and be patient when gathering information. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe for more videos. Let us know in the comments what you liked about this video and what topics you'd like to see in future videos.